All right, so Novak Djokovic, a record sixth World Tour Finals title, and safe to say that he ends 2022, a year that was so turbulent off the court, on an absolute tear, and, you know, rightfully probably feels himself as the best player in the world heading into 2023. You know, number six at the Tour Finals for Djokovic really seemed like a long time coming, and... It kind of didn't feel that way, but it had been seven years since he had last hoisted the trophy, and back in 2015, once he's gotten to five and I believe had won four in a row going back to 2012, it seemed like it would be a foregone conclusion that he would tie and pass up Roger Federer's record six tour finals titles. Obviously, as he's gotten older, it's become harder to, you know, avoid those off days and really dig in every single match against the best of the best, regardless of, you know, how much the conditions do favor Novak Djokovic and how much he loves playing at that event, regardless of the venue. He now has won that title in Shanghai in 08 and a bunch in London in the middle and now his first in Torino. And that latter part, what I mentioned with, you know, how hard it is to keep up the level to be able to hang and win four to five matches to win this title as you get older and further into your 30s. That is why I do consider this to be one of Djokovic's finer achievements of his 30s and perhaps in his career in general. You know the magnitude of, you know, equaling the record, but... Ever since we really entered this Djokovic 3.0 era in his 30s and his comeback from 2018 on, whenever he has played this event, you go down the list and 2018 he looked in imperious form, absolutely blistering through the rest of the field and all it took was just that one off day in the final against Zverev, obviously he also was carrying an illness and it didn't seem to bug him the rest of the tournament, but... You know, clearly it did seem to sap him a bit in the final. After that, 2019, one of the rare years that he didn't make it out of the group, and that was courtesy of two absolutely peaking performances by Dominic Thiem and Roger Federer in the group stage. 2020 and 2021, he had his great moments in those tournaments, ended up making the semifinals in both, and had his chance to make the final, but, you know... Took some special performances out of Dominic Team again, and then Alexander Zverev last year to stop him in the semis. But in all these years following 2015 when he last won the title, I'm going to exclude 2016 because it doesn't really fall under the same umbrella. It was the beginning of, you know, Novak's slump and physical ailments throughout 2017, beginning of 18. But I did feel like just about every year after that, you could point out at least one match during the tournament where Djokovic did really seem to actually check out. Whether it was fatigue or, you know, he just wasn't feeling it that day. Just off the top of my head, I mean, he was ill in that 2018 final and it did feel like once he went down a break in the second set, he was kind of just keen to get it over with. Similarly, in 2019, Federer played an extraordinary match, probably his last great match of his career. There, I remember Novak played a decent first set, and then second, you know, the wind kind of went out of his sails, and he went down a little bit meekly there. 2020, same thing happened against Medvedev in the group stage. And I mention all of these instances just because I found it really impressive that in the same situation during this year's ATP Tour Finals where Novak clearly was struggling with fatigue in the back end of the Medvedev match, of course, in the group stage, as well as throughout the Fritz match in the semis, and then he looked a little bit weary as well at the beginning of the Kasparud match in the final. But in all of these instances, we had seen in the past couple of years that Novak, you know, sometimes he just would be willing to let it go, wouldn't really dig in the way that he definitely did throughout the last three matches of this tournament. That Medvedev match in the group stage, he had already won the group, but he really just was not willing to give up an inch despite being very clearly on 
empty on the fuel tank throughout the last set. That second set of the semi against Fritz, you go back to 3-5, love 30 in the second with Djokovic serving to stay in the set. And to begin that game, you got two pretty careless points where it just seems like he was trying to shorten the points and go for broke and it didn't end up paying off. And in that type of mood, you've typically seen Djokovic be willing to just give up on these type of games or sets. And as noted, in the past couple years at this tournament, we've seen him lose from those type of positions, but he didn't allow it to snowball and get out of hand. He dug right in and, you know, put the pressure on the next game as you knew that he would the moment he got out of that service game. And after that, once he got second life in the set, he locked right back down and really escaped with a straight set win in that one as he did look quite weary carried over into the beginning part of the final but you know once he got settled in that second set was an absolute thing of beauty and you know a lot of this event when he wasn't struggling with fatigue i think that he really picked up his level big time at the end of Paris, I felt that his level had dropped off just a little bit, but he was very sharp when he wasn't tiring throughout the store finals, played two very, very clean matches in his first two group matches against Tsitsipas and Rublev. Again, you know, he didn't need to dig in the way that he did against Medvedev. There really was no reason to play for either of them. They both deserve immense credit for really just sticking it out and giving it their all throughout that match. You could argue because of that, Novak's exhaustion throughout the back end of the tournament was kind of self-inflicted. But, you know, when you're a champion like he is, impulsively it's just got to be kind of hard to kind of hold back even if it is the rational thing but as i mentioned before novak's willingness to really suffer in this event in ways that i do feel that he really hasn't been willing to at least consistently in events that aren't majors over the past couple of years that definitely speaks to a very high level of motivation at the moment and you can understand why you know after labor cup the goal had to be to just rack up points and try to get the ranking rebuilt in a way. And he more than achieved that, even playing more events than you're accustomed to seeing him at the end of the year. You know, breezed through Astana and Tel Aviv before that. He was sharp throughout those events and saved the Medvedev match in Astana for two sets. He really was kind of untested through all of them. He breezed through all of his matches in those events. Deep run again in Paris where, you know, he probably wins that event as well, if not for an outlier as far as closing the match. And before discussing, you know, some of the bigger implications, you talk about this event you know, I've harped on and on about how mentally locked in he was, but, you know, you've also got to shed some more light onto that serve, which has, you know, been probably the most improved shot over the last decade plus. Several times throughout the week where, you know, he really needed his serve to come through, where he was looking very weary, and just about every time he needed it, it came through and, you know, set him up with shorter points or just gave him free points outright. And you can't understate how needed that was given how much he was tiring at certain points in this tournament. This is nothing new, obviously. His serve has been shedded light upon so much over the last couple of years where it's just seemingly gotten better and better. But it has you know, seemingly come around to a point where it is reminiscent of, you know, how good Federer got at spot serving at the end of his career. And you'd be hard pressed to say that his serve is not, you know, almost on par with, if not at that level at this point. And as a parting note, you know, again, hitting home with how much he mentally seemed to dig in during this event and, you know, throughout the indoor hardcourt season, with how motivated I think that Novak Djokovic is right now, 
it very well may be setting up for another one of those epic Djokovic runs as far as piling up the majors. When he is motivated, historical precedent would tell us that he tends to win them in bunches, especially given how it looks like he is going to be able to play a more typical tennis calendar next year that he wasn't able to this year. Already, he's gotten the clearance to return to Australia for his best major. And regardless of where you stand on the political front for him being sidelined throughout the course of this year, it is undeniable that it takes a great deal of mental resilience to still put together the season that he has on the court. Starting and stopping so much, he has still put together a heck of a season. He added another Masters title, won another Slam, and finally closed the season in emphatic fashion, almost pulling off the undefeated finish to the season and ending with an emphatic 6th World Tour Finals trophy. And as a result, still heading into 2023, you've got to say that Novak Djokovic has as good a case as any to be considered the best player in the world. That'll do it for this video though. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching, and I hope that you enjoyed. If so, it would be much appreciated if you could hit the like button, help this video perform a lot better in YouTube's algorithm, and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. It's been another really fun year of talking about this game that we all love. I hope that with the break in the action with this offseason, unlike past offseasons, I can balance better, you know, season review stuff and also get back to some of the historical stuff that I enjoy doing a lot and I have more creative freedom over. Stuff that I was doing more so last year and didn't really dabble with as much this season. So hopefully there will be more where that came from. Otherwise, thank you so much again for watching and of course I will see you all in the next one.